Wells had a pretty high opinion of Anthony Cook. Well, so uh, now Houston has an even higher opinion because they're mm -hmm. the one that selected him. When we return, Carolina's uh, on the clock and on their mind. We have a pretty good chance of picking their last two. We'll try and look through the notes and see what we got for this one. We'll be back. <laughs> Can you figure out the cost of a long-distance call? We haven't studied that yet. What do I look like, a mathematician? You don't need to be a math whiz to save with Sprint Sense. It's the simplest long-distance calling plan yet. Just 10 cents a minute, every evening, every night, and all weekend long. Call now for Sprint Sense and you'll get an extra bonus, up to 100 minutes for free. Okay, but what are you going to pay for a minute of long distance to someone, oh, say, 3,000 miles away? 50 to 60 cents a minute. 80 cents? No, not with Sprint Sense. All your state-to-state -state calls are just 10 cents a minute for a full 12 hours every weeknight and all weekend long. And Sprint Sense couldn't be simpler. There are no calling circles, no confusing percentages. And remember, if you call now, you'll get up to 100 minutes free. Sprint will even switch you for free. So let's review. What are you going to pay for long distance? 10 little pennies. A dime a minute. I'm talking one thin dime. Very good. Call 1-800-913-9727. What guy hasn't experienced it? You couldn't be happier. You're absolutely devoted. And boom, something goes wrong. So you start saying, that's it, no more. Because I'll never feel the same way again. But you know what? Time passes and you feel different. And boom, you're back together. Come on, make up. Opening day, don't miss it. Because you'll only hate yourself if you do. Maybe not today, maybe not next week, but someday you'll be in the car and you go, boom, what the hell happened there? That fills it. All right, we are uh, back, uh, back in New York. Carolina's on the clock, and they haven't picked D-line yet. You just mentioned his name for the last team, Sean King. That's my guess. Oh, for the 36th selection overall, you, Carolina <laughs> selects <laughs> defensive end from Northeast Louisiana, Sean King. You're unbelievable, boom. Washington next on the clock. You're unbelievable. What it's a good pick, pick Mel. Although, although some teams had him sliding a lot. So some teams really soured on him. Why would that be? Well, I think mainly because of the system. He played in a read, react, contain scheme at Northeast Louisiana. And, of course, so you didn't see him turn loose until he got to the Senior Bowl. And I think here he is at the Senior Bowl. Uh, did a great job in those one-on-one -on -one drills. And here he is at Northeast Louisiana moving in for the sack. A former tight end. So we know he has the athletic ability. Uh, was at LSU and the SEC for a couple years. Then came to Northeast Louisiana. There he is playing up against BYU as a stand-up defensive end. And you see him here coming on the blitz. But he had to play in space a lot at a do some different things in their scheme and that's probably a lot of the reason why uh, in addition to coming out of northeast louisiana why he's there early second round but i think for for bill polian you're getting yourself a heck of a pass rusher at a bargain point in the draft so here's what they've done uh, the panthers have had four picks in the first 36 terry collins quarterback tyrone Poole, cornerback blake brockermeyer offensive tackle sean king defensive end four different areas of the football team now a little history lesson here Bill Polian rebuilt the Buffalo Bills from what they had become in the mid-80s, about the worst team in professional football. His first draft was 85. Now, i got to explain this a little bit. The reason there are so many picks here is that that was the year that they had the first pick in the supplemental draft, which they traded to Cleveland for Bernie Kosar. They got a one and a two in Chip Banks. Follow me now. Chip Banks never reported. They ended up getting a three and a four also. So they end up with eight picks. It's like an expansion draft for them. Look what he did in 85. Bruce Smith was the overall number one pick. Derek Burroughs was a heck of a corner till injury cut his career short. Chris Burkett was a pretty good wide receiver. Frank Reich is back to Bill Polian 10 years later at quarterback. Andre Reed, don't need to talk about him, still one of the best receivers in football with the fourth spot. Oh, by the way, also in 85, Polian traded a seventh round pick of the Bills to Seattle for Pete Metzelars, tight end, who now is still with Bill Polian 10 years later, back to Carolina. The point is, he's had experience doing this before, and as you can see by that chart, he's pretty much one for one with a lot of picks. That's 10 years ago. Carolina's hoping that they have a 95 draft like the Bills in 80. This is very impressive. You've done a great job. Thank you. You must have a terrific staff. Well, we think so. You put together a lot of material in a short time. 
It's informative, smart, well organized. Looks like your whole office worked all night. They did. Give everyone in your company my thanks. We will. We will. Kinko's, your branch office, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Introducing Huffy Blades All-Terrain Bike with an oversized Mega 2 frame design and an 18-speed Omni-Index gear shifting system. It's what Bonnie Blair rides when she's not on the ice. Huffy Blades from Huffy, America's first choice. You just spray it on. You just spray it on. Quicksilver wheel cleaner from Armor All. Just spray it on, and then just spray it off. That's it? That's it. Quicksilver wheel cleaner. Who will steal the wind and rule the sea? The challenge has stood for over 140 years. Who will be the defender? to the challenge. The America's Cup Defender Finals on ESPN. All right, we are into our, uh, well, we're into our seventh hour of coverage here, the first round, now into the second round of the NFL draft. It will continue until the end of the second round on ESPN2 with Mike Tirico and the gang beginning at seven tonight. Then tomorrow, bonus coverage. Back to the third round as Mel, Joe, and I and the cast of thousands from noon to three on ESPN. And then the conclusion of the 95 draft on ESPN2 from three tomorrow afternoon uh, until it's over. All 249 picks, gavel to gavel coverage. Of course, it's on ESPN radio. Of course, you can turn on your computer, those of you that know how to work one. And uh, you can join us online with ESPN Net and Sports Zone. And. Um, so basically, if it's if it's happening in the draft, we have it here, one station or one uh, computer or, or one radio or another. Um, Washington is up next, followed by the St. Louis Rams. And that may be a quarterback spot. But first, let's go quickly to Chris Mortensen in Carolina. And, and, and Bill Polian has to be pleased with the players that were left for him and the moves that he made. I think he got good value at every spot, Mort, and that's got to be what he's feeling. Well, that's right. In four picks, they've gotten two offensive players and, and Kerry Collins. And uh, but uh, right now Redskins on the board, and I think they're coming up there. The main thing about the Redskins, I'm just going to change subjects here real, qu real quickly here, Chris, is that they need to rebuild their offensive line. They lost Raleigh McKenzie, and they've got Michael Westbrook. Now they need to protect Heath Schuler and Corey Raymer, the Wisconsin center, uh, a big physical player. He's got to be their pick right here because they addressed their defense and free agency. Now's the time to address the offense, Chris. You're right, and Joe, you look at the Redskins. Um, boy, Jim Lachey was the, was the prototype tackle for years. I mean, it was ben Munoz Nick. to Lachey. Right. And now they're, they're speaking of those two names with Baselli too. And, boy, that, that's a lot of pressure to put on the young man chosen by Jacksonville. But uh, Mort mentioned the names. You know, the Hogs, this was just, you know, they were the champs, what, in 91? Well, there's, there's just four guys left from that team. I know, but the interesting thing about that, the Hogs got old, too. But when you take a look at the offensive line of the Washington Redskins today, four of those guys are over 30. I agree with Mort. I think that the offensive line is a good place to go, but also Daryl Green's not getting any younger. How long can he continue to play? I think the other place that the Redskins might consider in the second would be the secondary. And, you know, Jimmy Hitchcock is there. Bobby Taylor is there. So uh, would that be the case where you'd have two Notre Dame corners other than at the University of Notre Dame? I don't think you'd have two Notre Dame corners on one football team. So... Um, I would have to think that the offensive line may be the best way and, mo and the most logical place for the Redskins to go. Well, the pick is up. The Redskins have, uh, have uh, given the call and given the car to Gene Washington, the former 49er, and uh, now a uh, member of the National Football League uh, management squad. If it is a center, Chris Giesek can move inside the guard. So, With the 37th selection, Washington picks center, from Wisconsin, Good one. Corey Raymer. Good one, guys. St. Louis is on the clock. And there's someone that we thought uh, might go in the first round if a team really yeah. wanted to pick a center. So, so Washington, boy, for years, your your longtime hog, Jeff Bostick at center, and and uh, well, now maybe they hope that the uh, Weimer uh, starts to uh, be a member of the new Hogs. Let's go to Gary Danielson in Tampa Bay, Gary. 
Chris, this is a guy that could have easily gone in the first round. Uh, I first saw Corey Raymer as a sophomore, Brad and I doing the Big Ten games. He was the best center I've seen doing college football in the five years I've been with ESPN. He's got a lot of talent. Taking a look at Corey Raymer, he's great size for a center. And what I liked about him most is he came in as a defensive lineman to Wisconsin and was converted to offense, but he still has that defensive lineman mentality. But he keeps his feet when he blocks. He can run down the line and handle that nose tackle one-on-one. -on -one. That allows his guards to free up. He keeps low on his pass protection. He really was the key to Wisconsin's running game. This is a guy that you can just pencil in for Washington. He's going to play there for 10 years. This is a great pick for the Washington Redskins. And I really think that this is a type of guy you can build with and just know. Pencil him in. He's going to be there for a In fact, use ink. This guy's going to stay there for a long time. Chris? All right, uh, Gary, thank you. So Raymer goes uh, to the Washington Redskins, and now the St. Louis, I know it's still hard to say this, the St. Louis Rams uh, still drafting out of the West Coast, and I guess they'll have their mini camps on the West Coast before they move to St. Louis. By the way, they're going to play their first few games at Bush Stadium before the new Dome Stadium is ready. Um, now, the Rams are a team that may go quarterback. They've got Chris Miller. Remember, his college coach was Rich Brooks at Oregon, so, I mean, there's not a problem there except with Miller's help. Um, but outside of that, uh, remember, um, they have Tommy Maddox behind him, and, and we really don't know what Tommy Maddox can do. I mean, he was John Elway's caddy, but that's, you, you really don't do much. Elway selects all the clubs, even. You just carry the bag. That's all you do <laughs> if you're, if you're right. always caddy. So this might be a place for the Rams to look at the next best quarterback. It might be the slot. Give me who would be in your next flight, Mel. Well, the next group of quarterbacks will certainly start out with Rob Johnson from USC. Uh, you know, he's a guy that had the year where he put together some outstanding games, had that completion, 23 straight completions. Then he, you know, hit a wall late, but then he rallied against Texas Tech. Chad May, an inch shorter than teams prefer. He's dropped back a little bit. Eric Zier's only six foot and a half. There's some questions about him, but he's a winner. He's tough. He's intelligent. Uh, if we roll it to six through ten, uh, if you want to go any further than that, you would also find some quarterbacks like Stoney Case and Dave Barr, Cordell Stewart, Todd Collins. John Walsh. All these quarterbacks could go anywhere between the second and the fifth round. It's that much of a wide range of opinion, Chris. And you talk about it at this point, too. Great value with offensive linemen still. You still have the Wiegerts and the Barrett Brookses and the Brian DeMarco still there. Some teams are going to get some great offensive but, linemen in the second round. But here's quarterbacks. But Joe, if, if you're looking at a quarterback, who, who are your next one or two? Who well, do you, you like know, of that group? Well, it's interesting. The second page that Mel brought up is, is what's intriguing to me. But I think the guy probably next up on line would be Rob Johnson. Uh, I talked to June Jones about him. He likes his productivity, and he's liked him more and more. He just carries the football a little bit low, but he has excellent mobility. He does a good job of running the offense. He's accurate down the field. He makes smart plays. He's been coached by John Robinson at USC. But you see where he carries the football? That's something that can be worked on and is a mechanical change, but it shouldn't necessarily be a problem once he spends a lot of time in a camp. Throws the ball a little flat down the field, that's something else that can be worked on. These are all little minor tweaks that I think can make him very productive. Good athletic ability, outrunning the football. He'll learn to get down quicker because they will separate your head from your body. <laughs> Slides to the left very well. Again, nice touch down the field. I just like to see him put the ball up in the air a little bit more. Look at the numbers, though. 64% com completion, almost 65%. Twice as many touchdown passes as far as interceptions. What that simply, simply tells me is I've got a quarterback here who understands how to protect the football. His 65% completion tells me that he knows what to do with the football. The only knock, and it's a major one, is that everybody felt like he held the football a little bit too long so that he wouldn't throw interceptions and really took a lot more sacks than he possibly could have. That is, again, something I think he can work himself out of. Well, we had a quarterback, Steve McNair, of course, with what he's done statistically in over four years, and the athlete that he is, I mean, there's no surprise, but does not come up to the normal ranks, either by school, because he went to Alcorn State, or by the way that he plays. He's not going to be the next quarterback picked, I, I don't believe, but Cordell Stewart, to me, is, is an intriguing player. Mm -hmm. Good, Joe, it, it, quickly, and then I want to bring the coach in. Cordell Stewart. Some people are looking at him that maybe he can play another position, like Freddie Solomon was a quarterback. He can. 